The earlier years of my college experience was full of thick paper notebooks and a cheap plasticky laptop that technically got the job done, but it made me hate using it for assignments and papers. By my sophomore year, there was maybe two or three iPads being used in any given lecture hall, and mine were pretty large, anywhere from 400 to 600 students. By my junior year, almost every other student had an iPad, and they were using it to take notes, annotate their class presentations, and using it to write papers or create their slides on the go. I think iPads are one of the best tools for students in high school or college because of how intuitive and interactive it is to use and get organized between classes. As a student, you have a lot on your plate between classes, assignments, extracurricular activities, and social life. It can be challenging to keep track of everything, even with an iPad, and that's where digital planning comes in. With a digital planner, you can streamline your workflow, stay on top of your schedule, and maximize your productivity. There are automated calendar apps that can do that heavy lifting for you. Apple Calendar for one, it already comes up loaded on your iPad. And then there's other paid options, popular apps that are often mentioned like Fantastical. But in essence, all they allow you to do is add something to your calendar, maybe set a reminder or send a push notification to your device the day before the event or the due date. And due to their nature, even if there's added features to these different calendar apps, they all begin to look the same and begin to have the same limitations. But with something like a digital planner, a hyperlinked PDF file that can be loaded up in the same notes app you can use for your digital note taking in your classes, you start having more control over how your planner looks, how it works, and how you can organize your due dates, your events, appointments, and your tasks. The benefits of digital planning. With a digital planner, you have the ability to easily edit and rearrange your schedule, making it easy to adapt to changes, which you can't easily do in a paper planner. You can also set reminders for assignments and tasks by dragging and dropping events or appointments into the Reminders app, an underrated app that already comes loaded up on your iPad as well. And this can help you stay on track and avoid procrastination. Plus, you can access your planner from anywhere as long as you have your iPad and your iCloud account synced across your devices. So if you have an iPhone or a MacBook, you can access your planner from those devices as well because we all know Apple is really great about having these devices communicate and sync across each other. So let's get into the nitty gritty of how to set up your digital planner. First, choose an app that works for you. If you're already using an iPad for classes, you can most often just use the note-taking app that you're already using. You would just import the digital planner you choose into this app, and then you can use the planner as you would with note-taking. The difference here is that you can click between tabs, buttons, icons, and so on to jump between various pages in the planner. There are a lot of great app options out there, such as GoodNotes, Notability, and Colonotes. GoodNotes tends to be the app that I see used the most for digital planning, as well as digital note-taking now on the iPad, but I know many students take digital notes in Notability as well. And you can definitely import your digital planner into Notability to use. And if you love your digital planner, you can get the same effect by importing hyperlinked digital notebooks. So instead of writing on individual notepapers in the note-taking app, you can write and take notes in these hyperlinked notebooks allowing you to click between the tabs and organize your notes for class that way. Once you have your app installed, start by writing down the dates you have from your syllabus. This was my favorite thing to do with every new semester because I felt so accomplished writing down all of the due dates in my planner and color coding them or organizing them between all of my different classes. Not only did it give me a great idea on the material that would be covered, but also how much time I might need to dedicate to the class. There are different ways that you can get these due dates over into your digital planner. I prefer just writing them over into my planner and then color coding them with highlighters depending on the class. But there are also digital stickers you can use to represent the specific classes. Or you can use the text tool if you're not a fan of your own handwriting. As a bonus tip, turn on Scribble in the Apple Pencil settings so you can still get the benefits of writing out your due dates, 
but then have it convert to whatever font you choose for a neater, cohesive look in your planner. Doing all of this ahead of time will make it easy to navigate your planner and find the information that you need quickly throughout the school year or the semester. Now, I always get asked how I plan, which I find to be kind of a weird question, but after thinking a lot about it, it does make sense. Knowing how someone plans can frame your thinking into different methods of planning that might work well for you. So when I was a student using an iPad, after importing my digital planner into my note-taking app of choice, in which case was Good Notes, and then going through every month and writing down the dates for my syllabi, my next level of planning involved adding in holidays, breaks from classes, and other major events that I needed to be aware of, birthdays, appointments, and so on. On the monthly calendar, I added it there, maybe personalized it a bit more by using digital stickers or color coding, and on the yearly overview calendar, I like to color code those events, and if there's room, write the events along the side. For my kind of general planning, it would really come down to what worked that week. I was no stranger to just switching up weekly or daily spreads, depending on whether I had more things to get done in a week compared to last. With hourly weekly spreads, I can break down my schedule day by day, but since all of my classes followed a pretty similar routine, it was more beneficial to have my class routines on a separate page and then use my weekly pages for to-do lists and tasks that I needed to complete. With a digital planner, you're able to take a more granular approach to your schedule and how you write out your tasks because you can pick and choose between templates that are already included within your digital planner. Or you can purchase or create your own templates to add. In the Student Digital Planner from K Digital Studio, there are tons of more specialized templates for students like assignment trackers, grade tables, essay planning, and just a lot more that can really enhance your digital planning experience as a student. Because one of the greatest things about digital planning is the ability to customize it to your liking. You can just choose from a variety of these templates, these coordinating stickers to personalize your planner and make it more fun to use. You can also add photos, drawings, and handwritten notes, which can make your planner feel more personal and engaging. I feel like these things are a lot more difficult to achieve with a paper planner since it would be a huge paper planner, right? To have all of the monthly and weekly pages, but this student planner also has daily pages and additional academic related pages inside that in a paper planner would be like over 500 something pages, which is growing quite hefty. So what about those who do prefer a traditional planner? While digital planning has its advantages, some students still just prefer the feel of writing on paper. Fortunately, there are screen protectors out there that feel a lot like writing on paper when you use the Apple Pencil. One of those being paper-like, of course. And it's also fun personalizing the actual tech itself through a nice iPad case or even these Apple Pencil sleeves that are designed to look like school pencils. In addition, some students may be concerned about the cost of these digital planning apps, kind of the investment into the digital planning world. And while some apps do require a one-time or monthly fee, there are also free options available such as Colonote that can still provide the benefits of digital planning. It just takes a bit of searching to find an app that you like using and then can accommodate those hyperlinked PDF files. Ultimately, the key is to find a system that works best for your needs and to stick with it. And that's it for today's video. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any tips or tricks for digital planning on your iPad that you found helpful, especially as a student, be sure to share those down in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.